You're listening to Inspire Change, a broadcast that strives to educate, motivate, and empower men to challenge traditions of masculinity. To guide us through the intricacies and intersections of emotions, relationships, and male identity is renowned psychologist, author, and speaker, Gunter Swoboda. This is Inspire Change. Before I begin the actual podcast, I would like to respectfully acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, who are the traditional custodians of the land on which I work. I would also like to pay my respects to their elders past and present. Welcome everybody to Inspire Change with Gunter. I'm your host and today I want to talk about essentially what I would constitute as a silent struggle. So what am I talking about? Well, what I want to do is I want to dig into the roots, the prevalence and what we can do about men and loneliness. So let me begin to define what we're talking about. So loneliness is a common human experience which is characterized by feelings of disconnection, isolation, emptiness. Now, especially for men, social expectations surrounding masculinity can actually contribute to the profound impact of loneliness and alienation on our health. Okay, so loneliness fundamentally involves the subjective sense of disconnection. Now, if those of you who've subscribed to my channel, and if you haven't, please do, you will have picked up a theme that I've been talking about, and that is the importance of connection. Now, I've spoken about a friend of mine, Dr. Mark Williams, who's just recently launched a book called The Connected Species, which is all about fundamentally the importance of being connected. Now, alienation fundamentally refers to feeling estranged from society or from oneself, okay? Now, both isolation and alienation have significant effects on men's physical and mental health. There's no question about that. Now, the problem is that social norms you know, around masculinity, mostly stigmatise men from expressing emotions. And that includes the idea that we're lonely. I mean, of course we get together with the boys in the pub and we watch The Origin or the NFL uh, basketball and we get pissed and, you know, we have a good time. But the reality is, does that really constitute connection? Does it really really get down to the heart of it. And my argument is not entirely. So the first thing I think we need to look at is this issue about emotional expression and social expectations. Men are often encouraged by social norms to be stoic, independent, and emotionally self-contained. It discourages them from seeking help or even expressing feelings such as loneliness and alienation. So the lack of emotional expression actually leads to a build-up of emotional stress and in a lot of cases even severe mental health conditions like depression, anxiety and so on, self-harm in particular. So I want you to pay attention to this. Now, what's really interesting is that, and, and I have lots of stories about that, both in my own life and, and, and through my clients, where most men tend to rely really heavily on their romantic partners for emotional support. And they can feel really isolated when these relationships end. So separation, divorce, and death can really put most of us guys into a really bad place. The other problem that we as men often have is that we struggle to develop and maintain close friendships due to stereotypes and, again, social expectations around masculinity. Some of us even shy away from forming close relationships. So if we go back to attachment styles, it's not just about romantic relationships, but it could be also a lot of other relationships. So if I'm anxious or ambivalent about forming relationships, 
I am really going to be in a spot of bother here. So what's it say about physical health? Now, there's been a, an absolute slew of studies that have linked persistent loneliness and feelings of alienation to a variety of physical health problems, like higher risk of cardiovascular disease, weakened immune function, cognitive decline, and premature death. The stress associated with chronic loneliness can also lead to an unhealthy coping mechanisms such as alcohol or substance abuse, right? So we become, rather than dependent on people, dependent on, you know, what essentially is bad stuff, okay? So if you're getting drunk every night or at least sedating yourself every night with alcohol, pills, you know, powders, whatever recreational or prescribed drug is on the menu, you've got a problem. You need to check in. The problem again here with a lot of stuff that is related to issues around masculinity is that we continue to have a problem with men actually opening up and calling it for what it is. Right? We are often really reluctant to just put our hand up and go, I need some help. I'm feeling really lonely, I feel anxious or I feel depressed. And the three often go hand in hand. You know, if you've got social anxiety, you're not really going to rush out and meet lots of new peoples or even get onto Tinder or RSVP for a date. You're going to look at it longingly perhaps, but will you take the action to engage to alleviate your sense of loneliness? Now, the other problem is that a lot of us as men can actually feel lonely in relationships. I know that seems like an oxymoron, but it's true. And in other podcasts, in the following podcast that I'm going to do on this topic, I'm going to explain a little bit how that mechanism works. So what are we going to do about this? Well, the first thing is we have a problem with what I call the strong mythology. And that is when generally we as men think of strength, we often picture someone who is tough, resilient, and unyielding. Right? But this narrow definition of strength fails to take into account the full range of human experience. True strength is not just about being able to weather any storm. It's also about having the courage to admit when you're struggling, to ask for help when you need it, and to connect with others in a meaningful way. For example, imagine a person who's going through a difficult time. Perhaps they've lost a loved one, or they're dealing with a health issue, or they're facing financial troubles. In our culture, this person might feel pressure to put on a brave face and soldier on even when they're struggling to really keep it together. But true strength means recognising that it's okay to feel overwhelmed, to cry, to vent, and to seek comfort from others. So this is a really important aspect. So when we challenge these stereotypes and redefine what it means to be strong, is that we actually create a more compassionate and supportive world, both internally but also externally. We give ourselves permission to be human, to be imperfect, to be vulnerable. More importantly, it's also about being more flexible and more adaptable because that's really what's going to give us a greater degree of resilience. So in addition to canning, you know, the issue about being strong, I think what we need to do, like many things like ageing and so on, is that we need to promote open conversations about mental health, encouraging the development of strong social connections and creative supportive environments might just be some of the ways we can, you know, address this issue. So I've seen over the last few years the absolute booming of men's groups around dinner, about 
in all sorts of different contexts. And I think that's really fantastic. But again, one of the things that we as men struggle with is continuity and persistence. I've watched, you know, in the first wave of the men's movement, men becoming really, really enthusiastic about doing something about, you know, all the issues that we face. And two or three years later, you know, the various support groups and so on have collapsed. We, we, we just, you know, suddenly back to where we started from. So it is an issue, it is, it's, and it's really, really important that we collectively sit together. So here's a couple of things. We as men need to remember that we're not alone in our loneliness. And when we're open about our feelings and about seeking help, we can empower others to do the same. So fundamentally, we can break this stigma around men's mental health and build a more compassionate society, all right? So how does that society look? Well, it actually looks like um, men taking ownership for forging their own relationships. One of the things that I often find really uh, sort of it's beyond amusing in a way, it's actually at times irritating, is that when men get into, you know, longer term relationships with women, they leave it, we leave it up to our partners to manage our social life. All right? So, you know, there are obviously some problems with that. So when she's gone, we're down in the dumps, because not only have we lost her, but we've usually lost a whole network of people that we used to socialize with and do stuff together. So it is fundamentally important that we take Ownership, we are responsible for our own well-being. Don't delegate it to your partner, who in that instance will be treating like your mother who arranges playdates for you, right? Your partner is not your mother. There is nothing as unsexy as having a surrogate mum in your bedroom. Skip it. I don't like the term man up, but in this instance it's about be a man and take responsibility and don't delegate it to somebody else either because, you know, you, you don't have the time, which is often a really good excuse, or you can't be bothered at the moment or you sidetrack, or you have the excuse, oh, yeah, but we get together once a week for beers or we cycle together or run together or whatever it is. I would challenge anyone to look at the depth of the emotional relationships in those groups that are focused purely around sport and alcohol. Yeah, sure. A lot of us, as we get a little bit more titsly, are going to open up more emotionally. But that's not healthy. Um, you, you know, don't use alcohol as opening up your heart. It's like, it's, you know, half the time you might even say things that you later on regret. Right, the frontal lobes go on hold. We get more impulsive. And if someone says anything that pisses us off, then we're going to have a tendency to react badly, aggressively, or in some instances, we resort to uh, a good fight. So that's that's really not the way to go, right? So we, and this is where I bring in the idea that as men. If we don't take responsibility for being domesticated, we'll take responsibility for our social networks and friendships and maintain them and initiate them, right? Then we're not acting as an adult. We're still waiting for mummy to pl bring up the play date, right? Or let daddy take over and guide us into the right direction. We need to stand on our feet. It's a bit like, you know, if you do nothing else during the day, at the beginning of the day, make your bed. You know, and if you're in a relationship and it's your wife who always makes the bed, take that job off her. It is, I'm not being belittling here. I'm being serious. The little things make a difference. You know, how much of the housework are you doing? All of these things come back to this, what is my role? And my role in my relationship with myself is to help myself feel safe, 
secure, independent of the shit that goes on around me. Okay, now I'm going to be picking this topic apart a little bit further. For those of you who've enjoyed this podcast and it's a bit of tough love, then please subscribe to it. Um, This is our fifth season. We're coming to the, we're approaching the 200th episode, which will be with Dr. Mark Williams on a lot of topics, but I'd like to focus on his book. So that's going to be important. It's going to be a centre of conversation from which we usually branch out. Mark and I generally have, you know, pretty good conversations. If you want to get in touch with me, please look me up. Um, There's lots and lots of different ways how to get in touch, stay in touch, maybe contribute. You know, would you like me to answer some questions? I'm here to make use of my over 40 years as a psychologist and therapist and philosopher Um, and I have some particular observations about some of the aspects of our lives in our current society. So thank you for joining me. Uh, And this is your host, Gunter, reminding you that you need to reach out and that that is a sign of strength, not weakness. And it's absolutely okay to not be okay. It's not okay to do stuff to yourself in silence. So until next time, this is me signing off. Thank you for listening to Inspire Change, a broadcast that strives to educate, motivate, and empower men to challenge traditions of masculinity. For more information on the Making Good Men Great movement, or for individual or group coaching sessions with Gunter, visit makinggoodmengreat.com. For inquiries regarding broadcast topics or appearing on the show, email miranda at noartainment.com. That's miranda at N-O-I-R-T-A-I-N-M-E-N-T dot com.